Okay, we are at uh, section 30.4, the general form of Faraday's law. This should be a, a short little video. Uh, if we look here at the, uh, uh, we have a, you can see the magnetic field is going, uh, going into the, uh, the, the board and we have a loop in the uh, chain. If it's changing, if the magnetic field is changing, then we're um, inducing an EMF, which is causing the, the current to, to, uh, to run around the loop. And we also have a, an electric field. We have an electric field that in, in, the, uh, uh, in the coil. And uh, so the changing magnetic field results in a changing magnetic flux through the loop and the changing flux causes EMF in the loop. The EMF causes current in the loop and the current is driven by the electric field in the loop. Um, but what if we take a, away the, the, take the loop away? What if we take the loop away? This would take away the charges moving in the loop, but the electric field is still there. Uh, so the loop is not necessary for the existence of the electric field. Its ex existence is due solely to the changes in the magnetic field. So a magnetic field induces, uh, a changing magnetic field induces a, a, a change in electric field. Um, so uh, now let's look at, uh, uh, this is the equation, the Faraday's law was the, uh, uh, E, the EMF, is equal to uh, minus d phi dt, the changing magnetic field causes the EMF, but the uh, EMF is the integral of E dot ds, where E is the electric field in this case. Um, and if we integrate, we, you know, we know that uh, phi is equal to B A cosine uh, theta. We'll, assume that cosine theta in this case is one. So E dot ds, the E is in changing. Uh, I mean, the, the, or the E is, we're gonna integrate uh, around ds. So E dot ds is equal to minus d dt of uh, the magnetic field B times the area. So uh, if we integrate around a loop, that's E times two pi r uh, is equal to, uh, minus db dt of pi r squared. The b is the uh, is pulled out of the uh, the uh, equation, and a, the area is pi r squared. Uh, and we see that we have pi r on either side, so that uh, and we divide both sides by two, we end up with e equals uh, minus r over two uh, db dt. Um, the change in magnetic field. Now, if we, uh, this equation delta V is equal to E dot DS, which notice is the same as the one that we began with at the top, we, uh, we know that if you integrate between A and B to, to get a delta V, but if we go around the loop and end up at the same point, uh, the delta V is equal to zero, but we know in this case that the delta V is not zero. Um, you know, if you go around the loop and end up at the same point, if A and B are at the same point, then that usually equals a zero, but the uh, integral for our situation is not zero. So this is evidence that the electric field here is different in nature from that formed by stationary charges. Um, and this induced electric field is non-conservative. Uh, so the integral around the closed path is not zero, so it's not non-conservative. Um, now, it, it has many of the properties uh, as the electric fields due to point charges, but it's different. The induced current field can apply to forces on, it can apply forces on charged particles. Okay, and I think, uh, that's it. So this is just a short little section on the general form of Faraday's law. Uh, next we'll go to 30.5.